Okay, welcome to this video where uh, we talk about some examples of how to use the direct substitution property. So uh, the basic idea is this. So if you have a function in general, this limit um, does not have to be equal to this f of a. So to explain this just a little bit more, actually, uh, limit of f uh, as x approaches a, uh, it could exist or not. And then this other thing, f of a, could exist or not. Now, if they both exist, they're both numbers. But these two numbers don't even have to be equal. However, if f is a polynomial, then these two numbers are always equal. So that leads to this thing. It's in the book. It's called the direct substitution property for polynomials. It's, it, this right sentence right here is exactly the same as this. So it says this, right? So if f is a polynomial, then if you have to compute this limit, you might as well just replace it with the y value of the function f at x is equal to a. But there is this requirement that f has to be a polynomial. So let's look at an example uh, of this in just a minute. Um, the whole point of this is that it's going to save you a lot of time. So if you ever have to compute the limit of a polynomial as x approaches a, you should always use the direct substitution property. Uh, you don't have to. You could instead use, as we did in class, the sum law, difference law, and law 7, 8, 9. But that's going to take up a lot of time. And you do this once and you realize, oh, this is always going to work out the same way. So the way to save time is just to use this property. So just re-quoted this right here from the first slide. So let's use this thing on an example. Uh, here's this function, f of x is equal to x cubed plus blah, blah, blah. And the question is, find the limit of f as x approaches 2. OK, so can we use this? Well, there's this requirement that f is a polynomial. And yeah, this thing that we have is a polynomial. So great, we've met the one requirement. And we can use this theorem. So then what? Well, now that we can use this, go ahead and just plug in a is equal to, well, what do we want? What do we want? We want this 2 right here. So plug in a is 2 right there and right there. And so computing this thing, which is what we were asked for, we can just replace this by just looking at f of 2 instead. And what is f of 2? Well, that just means, look at these x's highlighted, uh, just replace all of these x's with a 2 in this formula right there. So let's do that. That simplifies to 15. Uh, let's look at the same example. Um, to say this a little bit more compactly, you might not actually name the function f, and you might just see something that looks like this. But this is really the same example, right? This is limit of really the same function. We just haven't called it the function f. But it's still a polynomial, so we can use the DSP, and you'd still get this 15 right there. OK, there's also a direct substitution property that works for one other group of functions. And those are the rational functions. And remember, that is a function which is this fraction. And the numerator and denominator both have to be polynomials. So the, 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 the key thing with this, though, is that there's an additional requirement. So there's this one requirement. Same kind of requirement as before. f has to be a certain type of function. But there's this new requirement right here after the and. And it's that a has to be in the domain. And that a is that limit that you're trying to approach. OK, so there's the property. Let's try using this. Here you have this rational function. And we're going to need to check if we're going to use this property. We have to check this not only that it's a rational function, but the second condition, which is that a, or in this case, namely 3, 3 better be in the domain. So if you were to plug in 3 in the denominator, you don't divide by 0. So 3 is in the domain. We can use the DSP for rational functions. And that means that this thing which we're asked to compute uh, simply all you do is you plug in x is 3 everywhere, and you get this, and that simplifies to 8. And just a quick comment here that you cannot use the DSP if you were to compute limit as x approaches 2. So if you were trying to look at that special x value a is equal to 2, you can't do that because 2 is not inside the domain of this function right here. All right, just to summarize, uh, in general, when you look at a function, uh, the limit does not have to be the same as the y value of the function at a. And here's an example, just in terms of a cartoon. Here's just a graph of some function, where the limit would be this y value that's up here. But the actual value of the function, that's this part, would be this lower y value down here. However, if you're looking at rational functions or polynomials, as long as you're looking at rational functions for a in the domain, then these two numbers are always the same. And this is what the book calls the direct substitution property. And here's the thing, if you're looking at a function which is not a polynomial or not a rational function, then you can't use the DSP. But actually, in a couple sections, we're going to look at something which is a lot like the DSP, which can be used for some more groups of functions. The end.